All right, our third amigo, Andre, not here to talk Browns football. Dre, cut down the 53 man roster. Any surprises, and what position do you think they go and get if they need it? I would say surprise-wise, I thought Ramsey Robinson was a player that played really well at cornerback. He was cutting the first half of the cuts. I thought that was surprising, but that tells you how they feel about Dockery. Even though he had that tough game Thursday night and he had the penalty flags, I think they like his aggressiveness, and he's a big guy. The other guy that kind of surprised me a little bit was Demetrius Williams, the yeah. wide receiver. Because he was productive through preseason and he had played in the NFL before, but obviously Carlton Mitchell was a draft pick of Tom Heckard's last year, uh, and he had a really bad camp. He had a finger injury. He was dealing with the ankle injury last week. He didn't even play Thursday night, Mike. So I think a lot of people felt like uh, that Carlton wasn't going to make the team. Funny story, I'll tell real quick. I get out to Berea on cut day, you know, yesterday, and there's these, you know, the kids kind of stand outside yeah. and they wait for the autographs and everything. And this kid uh, sees me and he goes. Andre, they're not cutting Carlton Mitchell, are they? And I, I felt bad for the kid. He goes, he's my favorite Brown. He always signs everything that I sign. And this kid was sweating it out. And I think for us as fans and, and being around the game, we just go, we look at a list and go, all right, let's get ready for the season. Right. But it, it kind of touched you in a different way yesterday when you see this kid, like almost in tears in his eyes going, he's got to make the team. So when I walked out and I go, he made it. And the kid like high-fived me. So if you're watching out there, good stuff. But Carlton's got to play better now when the yeah. season starts. They have to be because he has a great physique. He's fast, but for whatever reason, it hasn't translated to the field. Drake, can they get away with two quarterbacks? No, <laughs> in my opinion, I don't think so. And I would think by the time they get on the practice field Monday, Tuesday, they'd have to have someone in mind that they're going for. I would think they would bring Jarrett Brown back, most likely as a quarterback on the taxi squad per mm -hmm. se, because I thought he played. He had moments. If you go back to Thursday night, I think he was nine for ten at one time. He had moved. He had that beautiful pass down the sideline for a score. Yep. But then Mike, and you've been around football enough, he gets that, and then you have a drive where it's a three-point game, and he throws off his back foot and throws an interception. In the NFL, you can't do that. And I think this is their way of saying, hey, we like you, but we, we can't. I mean, because we look, a year ago at this time, we were going, oh, Colt McCoy is going to sit back and relax. We've got two veterans. We all know what happened. Right. And they, ha they, I think in the back of their minds, they're going, we don't think we'll get back to our third quarterback. But if we do, we better have someone that can win games for us. All right, let's get ready for the regular season. It's finally here. All the fake games are over. Scrimmages, as Pat Shermer likes to call them, they're done. Yes. Okay? Now you get ready for the Bengals. And, Dre, there's no question they should win this football game. Yeah. I'm glad you said it that way. You're absolutely right, Mike. They should win the game, but I don't want anyone to get overconfident. And I'll tell you why. Cincinnati offensively is probably going to be pretty bad. Yep. They obviously have a rookie quarterback that was at TCU last Last, last year, and they looked like they could use him the other night, uh, even though they scored a ton of points. But they have a rookie wide receiver as their number one. They're getting their tight end back, Gresham, that was hurt last year. Their number one uh, guard, Bobby Williams, is out for four games for steroids. Then Cedric Benson has been at the Great Bar Hotel. He's been at the Great Bar Hotel. I mean, I don't know how the NFL is going to let him play next week. So offensively and on defense for the Browns, Mike, I think they should go at him hard. But I'll say this, defensively, Cincinnati's better than a lot of us think. They bring Zimmer back as their coach. Maliuga is healthy, and he's going to start at middle. Carlos Dunlap is a, is a guy that killed us last year in, in December. Defensive end out of Florida who would have been a first-round pick if he doesn't get a DUI the week before their bowl game. They have some talent on defense. Leon Hall has probably had seven interceptions against the Browns in the last two years. They have some guys on defense. Offensively, there should be problems. Being the first game of the season, Mike, they have to get off to a hot start. Not only this week against Cincinnati, but let's be honest. And I had a coach tell me in, in, in Berea, look, if you're going to play Peyton Manning, let's play him week two when he hasn't had any practice right. or anything. The schedule is made out for them to get off to a good start. Now the question is, can they? Yeah, and that's a good point. That's where I was going to go next. Just take, you know, because we always seem every year to look at those first, let's say, four, four. games. Good, those are yeah. really the real. How do you see those first four? I mean, you just talked about the Bengals. Yeah. Then you got Peyton in week two. I would say this, Mike, and, I, and this is me being overzealous, but if they're going to have a quality season, they got to go three. They got to go three and one. You can go. I have no problem going to Indianapolis and losing, regardless of the Peyton situation. But I think you have Tennessee in there and Seattle in there. Nothing against those teams, but they're kind of in the same situation we are. Uh, I don't think the Browns are going to win eight, nine, ten games. But they need to do this because the month of December, as we go in those chunks, as you kind of said, that, that month by month. Right. Mike, it gets very difficult in December. And I don't have to, you know, you travel to San Francisco, you come home, you go to Oakland, and anybody that's traveled like that, that's not good for the team. Right. And then you get the killer part of it where you get Baltimore on a Sunday, Pittsburgh on a Thursday. That is going to be atrocious. So they have to get off to a good start. And, and I think we found out in preseason, Mike, the first 22, and you and I have had this conversation, yeah, yep. first 22 aren't bad. After that, the, the depth is a little scary. It's big. And, and you go, so let's say they go, get off to a three and one start, but still more importantly, in the division, do they have what it takes to split with Pittsburgh yeah. and split with Baltimore? Well, you know, until, until you're able to. And I said split. I'm no, not even no, saying, no. you know. Hey, to be good, you got to do that. 
And let's be honest, that's been a problem the Browns have had. Romeo Cornell's last season, he was 0 for 6 against the division. I think Mangini's first year, he was 1 in 5. That has been the problem for the Cleveland Browns. They have not played well in the AFC North. I don't know if you can beat Pittsburgh twice this year. You play them the last, I think, January 1, and you play them on that Thursday after they yeah. play Baltimore. That's just set up for disaster. I mean, I'm just being honest. It's not good. Baltimore, I, I think they're going to be pretty good this year. I, but the thing is, let's go out and win on Sunday. If you beat the Bengals, you get off to that start. Yep. And, and I just think the way the schedule's set up, we can get a lot of positive energy early. And then sometimes, we saw this in, what, 07, you know, the Browns got off to a decent start against a kind of, it's kind of the same schedule going against the NFC West. Before you know it, they had 10 wins and, you know, a ball goes here or there and if the coaches play their guys that last game, they go to the playoffs. I'm not saying it's going to happen this year, but you got to get off the 3-1, and 2-2, and 5-3 two, and three to get there, is my point, I guess, when you look at it. And what did the schedule maker do to put Pittsburgh and Baltimore yeah, well, down there at the end? I mean, that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I think the lockout. Because if you remember, when the, the, the schedule comes out in April, and in April, we didn't know when football was set up. And if you look at the draft, or if you look at the schedule, uh, it's kind of set up if they would have missed the first two or three weeks. So you would get all your division games in. And, and then, like, I think they put Cincinnati and Cleveland with week four buys. So it was kind of like, if we do have a lockout, we can have Cincinnati and Cleveland play each other. It doesn't help the Browns at all oh. for what they did. Because they could really get off to a great start. And yep. why not sprinkle in Pittsburgh in the eighth week, seventh week? Why do you have to play them twice in a month? That makes no sense at all. That's where they're hurt, and it goes back to the lockout. If you look at all the schedules, they were kind of made for if teams missed the first two or three games that they would get all their division games in. I get that, and I understand that, Mike, but it doesn't help a team like the Cleveland Browns at all. All right, help the Browns fans out there. What are you going to look for in these first four games, offensively, defensively? What are you going to be looking I'm for? I'm looking for Colt McCoy. and I mean, Peyton Hillis should be able to win the game. That's not by himself next week, but I want to see them incorporate Greg Little. Evan Moore, obviously, is a, a big piece of it. You know, and I did this on our show over in STO, and I said to Ben Watson, I go, hey, man, you guys have some great tight ends, but we don't even talk about Ben Watson. <laughs> he led the team last year in receptions and yards. He had five touchdowns. This offense, I'm excited to see the West Coast offense, and I'm excited to see Pat Shermer put a game plan together. You know what I mean? Yep. We've talked about it, but let's see him put a game plan together for a whole game and see how he can do that. Defensively, I want to see if I'm a little worried about the two rookies. I think they both are very talented, but I think when, when a team comes in, and they get the game plan, and they're going to go, Mike, you know, it's just like freshman in high school or college. They're going to they're go at Phil Taylor. They're going to trap him. They're going you know, to they're they're do little things to see how smart he is. And I think Jabal Sheard showed a moment on Thursday where he kind of jumped offside, touched the guy. Yeah. Then he gets a penalty. The next, like, you know, and right. it happens with young players. I'm not beating them up. But I think they're going to have to get over that. And I'm looking for Dequell Jackson to just, you know, keep your fingers crossed. I think he's going to have an incredible year. He's in great shape. He looks good. Uh, and he's made tackles behind the line of scrimmage. The other worry that I have early on, especially in week two when you go to Indy, I'm worried that Usama Young and T.J. Ward are going to be playing together really for the first, second time. And the communication. And football, and I know it's hard to realize this, the safeties in this defense are so important because they set up the other nine guys. These guys have never played a game together, so that worries me a little bit. But I think they're both very talented, and you could have a really good secondary if they can get all get healthy. And it looks like everyone's healthy. Muhammad Massaquas practiced the last couple of days. Uh, Usama's been out in the field. Josh Cribbs has been back. Other than Eric Steinbach, Mike, they are they're about as healthy as you can going into opening day. Yeah, and if, if there's any place that they're going to make a pickup, Where's it going to be, do you think? I would say offensive line still. I'm not sold. Hey, I like Jason Pinkston, and I get that the team wants to use their rookies. But, you know, if there's a guy out there that you could put in between Joe Thomas and Alex Mack, why not? I, I think you're already starting Sean LaValle, who's basically a rookie as well. He's been great throughout the preseason. So I would look at offensive line. Linebackers are still very thin. We don't know if, uh, if uh, I'm trying to think, if, if Titus Brown will be able to come back. He's going to come back soon, but we don't know how soon. The first three linebackers, not bad. But, Mike, after that, and you know how, and, and the way football is now today, on second down, you bring in the, the speed guys. Third down, you bring down, you know. So they're thin with that. And I think you're going to worry about it because Fujita's a good player, didn't finish the season last year. Yep. Gokong, good player, hasn't played in a month. Dequell Jackson hasn't played in two years. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Right. They, if there's a guy out there, and I don't say like a guy like Lance Briggs, but a guy that's, you know, four or five years in, into his career, has a little versatility, can play in and out, I think they'll pick up a guy like that sometime this week. All right. Go home. Get some rest. Enjoy your day off. Football is back it is. for good. But I need my labor day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Andre Dott. He's got us ready now for the Browns season.